People are sometimes embarrassed by language, thinking that it's an obstacle to be overcome. In reality, it's actually one of the legacies to be cherished. I started out training to become a linguistic missionary. So I was going to do analysis of a previously unwritten language, and then I was going to translate the Bible. But uh, that, for various reasons, that didn't work out. But my passion for language study and my passion for analyzing language never subsided. Sociolinguistics is the study of language in the context of society. We study not simply the structure of language, but how language is used in society to give people identity, to communicate values, to symbolically index who you are, where you are, and what your stance in life is. Social linguistics as a science, it is the most humanities oriented. As a humanities, it is the most science oriented. I started in Detroit shortly after the Detroit riots in the 1960s because at the time there was concern about educational disparity between white and black students and if it was linked to language. And we spent several summers interviewing over 700 people of all ethnicities, of all social classes and so forth to get an idea of how language worked in great urban areas. North Carolina is dialect heaven. There isn't a state that has a richer heritage. There isn't a state that is more exciting in terms of the variation. The North Carolina Language and Life Project is simply devoted to researching and then working with communities to celebrate dialect heritage. In the process of our research over the last 25 years, we've studied Outer Banks speech in Harker's Island, Manio, and Ocracoke. We've also studied African-American speech in about 15 different places, ranging from Princeville to Hyde County to the mountains. We've looked at Appalachian English. We've looked at ethnic varieties that range from Lumbee English. We've looked at the Cherokee language, and uh, we've looked at Hispanic English, all in North Carolina. It's got it all. Linguistic gratuity is simply an obligation of a researcher to take knowledge and work with the community to see how can we return something to you for having been so cooperative and given us all this data. So we work with them to develop museum exhibits. We have several of them around the state, among the Lumbee, on the Outer Banks. And then we started a program in the school to educate the kids and the community about its own dialect. And we've been doing that for 20 years. When you've been told all your life that the way you talk is an obstacle but you overcome, and you finally learn the truth, that is, it's actually a legacy to treasure and empower you as you move forward, people become very proud of their dialect background. There's a natural curiosity about language that people have. What we need to do is keep it interesting and accentuate the positive. In the process, we started saying this would be a neat topic for documentaries. And so we hired a videographer who began producing films. We're now on our 10th film. Bill Friday has been a wonderful mentor to me. He, he was always available. We always chatted about things. He lobbied on my behalf, and he was always willing to converse about anything that I needed to converse with. Mentoring is a part of who I am and, and what I want to do in life. Students that I work with, I want to see successful. I want to see them pursue careers that are fulfilling to them. You know when you get it right, when you're at age 72 and Monday morning comes and you can't wait to get up and do what you've been doing for 50 years. When that happens to you, you know you have it right. So find something you love, pursue it as an avocation and a passion, and you'll never go wrong.